And that is the unranked matchup between Clemson and Miami at Hard Rock Stadium, Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, ACC Network. So first of all, that's all you need to know. ESPN ABC had the option of Duke at Florida State, Clemson at Miami. ABC takes Duke, Florida State, Clemson at Miami's on the ACC Network, Clemson a three-point favorite, the over-under in this one, 48 and a half, just like Bama, Tennessee, we just talked about a minute ago. Now, in terms of this game, listen, I, I think the thing that's kind of overshadowing this matchup, it is Dabo Sweeney's comments earlier in this week. And I know everybody's moved on, and I know that he has kind of run them back a little bit or, or pulled back on them a little bit. But I do think they're worth noting here because I do think it speaks to the psyche of Clemson and where this program is at coming into this game. For those who did not see the comments, I'm assuming most people who care enough to listen to a show like this probably have. But Dabo was kind of asked about the state of the fan base. Clemson's coming off a bye and really didn't have some very nice things to say about the fan base. This is what he said. He said, we're at a point in our time, and I hate that, where people, if you don't go undefeated, you're losers. You're terrible. And it's just such a terrible mindset. And honestly, maybe we need to lose a few games and lighten up the bandwagon. Sometimes the bandwagon gets a little too full. So one I'll just be blunt. Listen, you know, I'm not going to do the whole thing, crush Dabo. He's the worst human in the world. That's not what I'm going to do. But what I do think is, one, I don't love calling out your fans because I know that, you know, boosters and TV contracts, they help pay the bills. But fans are the backbone of any great program. And the reason that you make eight, nine, 10, 11 million dollars a year, Dabo, to coach football is because those fans love Clemson football. They love what you've done for them and they love the standard that you've set and they want to stay on top of the sport. And so that's what stands out to me is like, I don't love going after the fans, but to me, the other thing that stands out is this Dabo's way of kind of lowering expectations, lowering the bar on his program. Because I remember back in the day when Dabo knew he had the best team, when he knew he had Trevor Lawrence and he knew he had all those guys, he wouldn't say stuff like this. It would be the exact opposite. Remember that year going into the playoff 2020 COVID season? He's like, yeah, I don't think Ohio State should even be in there. They don't, they, they can't compete with us. They only played six games this year. Now they ended up losing that game, but it doesn't change the fact that Dabo, when he has the dudes, when he's got the alphas, he's got the confidence and he's not afraid to share it. And so him saying stuff like this, it leads me to believe that he knows in his heart of hearts, this team ain't built the way that I thought it was. And this team is going to have its hands full on Saturday. And I think that's exactly how I feel going into this game. By the way, it is worth noting, and I want to be fair, Dabo did pull back those comments a little bit. He said 98.5% of my fans are awesome, but it's the one and a half that, you know, are, are, are driving people crazy. But again, if you're eight and zero and you're destroying everybody like you were a few years ago, I don't know that you'd be acting this way. And so I bring it up because looking at this game, Clemson's going to have their hands full. By the way, this open as a three and a half point, fa- uh, Clemson is a three and a half point favorite. They're down to three points. But when I look at this game beyond that, a couple things stand out. One, Clemson, and it speaks to what Dabo said a minute ago. They're struggling to move the football right now, especially through the air. This Garrett Riley offense, it was supposed to click. It was supposed to move the ball. It was supposed to this. It was supposed to that. You know that Cade Klubnik right now is averaging like six and a half yards per completion? That's like half of what Jaden Daniels and LSU are doing. I think LSU is like 11 and a half yards per completion. Cade Klubnik is at six and a half. Part of it is on him. I don't think he's been that good. And part of it is on the fact that I don't think those those wide receivers can really separate and they don't have the Sammy Watkins, the Mike Williams, the T. Higgins guys that they've had in the past. Thank you, everybody, as always, for your support of the Aaron Torres Pod and Aaron Torres Pod YouTube channel. And we have a major announcement as legal sports betting is now in the state of Kentucky. That is right. The Aaron Torres Pod and Aaron Torres Pod YouTube has partnered with DraftKings Sportsbook and the DraftKings Sportsbook app. And here is the best part. DraftKings has an incredible offer for listeners of the Aaron Torres Pod who are first-time customers with DraftKings. This is the deal. Here is what you need to know. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Bet $5 on any game, just $5, and you get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you use the promo code TORUS. That's right. It's that simple. Again, first-time customers, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, bet $5 on any game, pro, college, any sport you want, and get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you use the code TORUS. Thank you to our new partners, DraftKings Sportsbook, 
Thrilled to be working with them. Take advantage of their offer now. So I bring it up because this to me speaks to, I think Dabo kind of knows we got our hands full on Saturday. It is worth noting, by the way, I think this is an important stat as well as far as this Clemson offense. Now they're running the ball very effectively, but Cade Klubnick, people would push back. Oh, you know, you're, 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 you're being too tough. 11 touchdowns, four interception, four interceptions on his part. You know, of those 11 touchdowns, seven came against either Florida Atlantic or Charleston Southern. So it's not like they're throwing the ball all over the field against everybody. They threw the ball all over the field against inferior competition. In their three ACC games so far, four, I guess it would be, they they have only thrown four touchdown passes. And the last time we saw them, it was 17 to 12, a final score against a Wake Forest team that is currently, as I'm recording here, 0-3 in the ACC and 3-3 and overall. So this team is not the vintage Clemson teams of the past. Defense is still really good, especially against the, the the run. But Miami, on the other hand, let's switch gears to them. Because when I look at this Miami team, a couple things, in my opinion, are true about them. One, probably a little bit record that, better than that 4-2 and two record indicates. But they also have shot themselves in the foot over and over and over again the last two weeks and probably deserve to have those two losses. When they've been on and great like they were against Texas A&M, they look like a legitimate top 15 team. But this is a team, and this was a thing that kind of followed Mario Cristobal from Oregon. In the big moments, in the big games, oftentimes they beat themselves. Last two games for Miami, nine total turnovers. That is unacceptable anywhere across college football, okay? Four two weeks ago against Georgia Tech, including that very notable fumble that would have sealed the game if they had just taken a knee. And then five more last week against uh, against uh, against uh, North Carolina on the road. You can't do that against a future first-round pick again in Drake May. And the wild part is Miami moved the football. Like, I think that's the part you look at that game, you say, oh, they lost by 10. It wasn't even close. No, no, no. They moved the football, the Miami Hurricanes did. They just kept coughing it up. In that game, uh, North Carolina had a little over 500 yards of total offense. Miami, on the other hand, had 482 yards of total offense, including 391 through the air. So that's the good news, is they are moving the football. They are effective. They need to take care of the football. Like I said, I think I said five turnovers last week. It was four last week, five the week before. But nine in two games is simply too many. And so when I look at this game, I don't trust the Clemson offense. I don't trust the Miami offense to not turn the ball over. So it feels like a stay away to me. If I had to take a side, probably similar to Alabama, Tennessee, I would probably actually take the under in this one simply because it's a game where I think I do trust the, 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 the defenses, you know, relatively speaking, Miami, very good against the run top 10 run defense in college football. I think that's important because remember Clemson don't pass the ball. Well, as I just said, they do run the ball relatively effectively. I think they would lean on the run if they can. I think they're going to have as much trouble as any game all season running the ball. This is the best run defense that Clemson has seen. Yes, I include Florida State. Yes, I include Duke. Pass defense is pretty good for Miami as well. But then from the Miami perspective, this is the best defense that they have seen so far this year by a country mile. Clemson still gets the job done on defense with all those linebackers, Jeremiah Trotter, Barrett Carter, whatever. But the question is, can they get the plays downfield that they need to? So in the end, not going to belabor the point. Dabo didn't love the comments, but more importantly, just think that it speaks to me. I think he knows this team is limited, even with Garrett Riley in as the offensive coordinator, even with Cade Klubnik in his quarterback. I'm not betting this game, but if I had to take a side, I'd probably lean under. If I had to pick a side, I'm actually probably going Miami. Home crowd in their in their favor. They have the better quarterback. They have the better skill position, guys. I think the defensive personnel probably favors Clemson. But again, I'm not betting either side. I would probably lean the under.